Chapter 4. A Crash Course into the Impact of Your Emotions Emotions have inertia. They have what is called persistence. They do not just go away or vanish after feeling them. If we were walking in the forest and we saw a bear in the distance, and then it turned and walked away and disappeared into the tree line, we do not simply stop feeling uneasy because we cannot see the bear anymore. The uneasy feeling stays with us, and it stays with us for a time. It's like spilling water onto the floor. After we mop up the mess, the floor is still slightly wet, and it takes some time to dry. Our emotions are the same. We do not just snap out of our emotional states. No. Although mopping the floor clears the spill a whole lot quicker than just leaving it and waiting for it to dry on its own, we need a good emotional mop. There is a two-way street with emotions and your power of choice. By choosing different pathways to the responses of your emotions, you can arrive at different destinations. Emotions also go hand in hand with clear rational thinking. Anyone who says that emotions are counterproductive and are not connected to clear thinking is just mistaken. What is counterproductive are mismanaged emotions, misinterpreted emotions, and detrimental thinking. This is counterproductive. Your brain processes data and evaluates this data through your filters. Emotions are part of that data. Clear rational thinking is built on clear and well-managed emotions. Unfavorable thinking and misengaged and mismanaged emotions are a clear path to hell. The good news is, we can take charge and interrupt and intervene in these processes. Some easier than others, for sure. The point is, we can interrupt and intervene in these processes. At first, we might not see an immediate effect on this. But just like a diet or an exercise program, whether it is easy or not, over time, over time of consistency, we will see the results of our efforts. As we change our thinking, we can change our state. And as we change our state, we can be on the road to happiness in no time. The strongest aspect of being human is our ability to analyze and think about our thinking. We call this part cognition. Cognition includes all our conscious processes. Cognition includes all conscious and unconscious processes by which knowledge is accumulated for us. Our ability to know that we can perceive, conceive, recognize and reason is our greatest ability. Using this well is one of our greatest challenges. Knowing how this all works is a step to our happiness. This is also the difference between spilling and containing. And we do this with our emotions. Our emotions are either spilling or they are contained. Emotional spilling. If we have ever watched a drama series or seen those videos of someone freaking out and clearly overreacting in a fast food store or simply watching a young child having a tantrum, this is emotional spilling. An individual going through emotional spilling will feel the need to share their emotions with everyone and anyone who will entertain them. And they'll make an effort to ensure that anyone with an earshot will hear them. They often turn the volume up to get attention and will also test to see what they can get away with. This is also a cry for help, attention, and it's a deep-seated, unmet need which has not been attended to in their life. Emoting and expressing your emotions are a very good thing until this becomes destructive. Emotional containment. Imagine if we could buy bottled water without the bottle. Imagine. How would this work? Without the container, the water would spill all over the floor. We need the container. We need the container for the water. The same is true for our emotions. We need a container big enough to hold our emotions. Otherwise, they will spill all over. The idea is not to have them in a vault. It's not to lock them away. It's not to lock them in a vault that you can never access. This is also a bad idea. It's about containing them, holding them. Developing yourself and engaging in a process of self-mastery is a way to build your inner containers and direct the flow of your emotions. Apparently, Paul Dirac, a famous physicist who had a reputation of being very robot-like, even he acknowledged that it was his emotions which drove him. It was his emotions which drove him to make his most profound discoveries. The difference was he was contained. Actually, he was very contained. His emotions were his, and he kept them to himself and within himself. He still used them, and he used them well. These are examples of extremes, the edges, 
the edges of either being out of control and spilling or being too contained and being like a robot. Here are a few questions for you. How contained are you? Are you spilling? Is your emotional system healthy? Do you blame yourself for emotional outbursts? These questions are not to blame you or to blame anyone for anything. This is simply the work that we need to do to have the life that we truly desire. Oftentimes, there is the question, should I trust my emotions? Well, your emotions are like your eyes. For the most part, your eyes are great. They're fantastic. However, we can be presented with an optical illusion. And the optical illusion tricks our eyes. It tricks our eyes and our brain into thinking something which is not quite reality. Our eyes can see movement in a picture where there isn't any. Our eyes see a color which is not there, or the color becomes darker than it really is. For great examples of this, simply Google optical illusions to circle C what I'm talking about. Your emotions can function in the same way. Your emotions can deceive you. They can misdirect you, and they relate to our eyes. Just because there are optical illusions does not mean that suddenly your eyes stop working. You know, you don't have to stop using your eyes. No, that's silly. That's ridiculous. We simply need to know when we are being tricked and when we are not. This is just like trust. We need to trust and verify. We need to verify our emotional signals. We process our emotions from the state that we're in while we're experiencing these emotions. And we need to be aware of our state of being. We can have the same emotion in two different states of being and process them in two totally different ways. As an example, I can experience frustration. And if I'm in a good space and have no pressure on me, I'll process that frustration very differently than if I was under pressure and in a bad space. If I was in a bad space, this frustration will come out as anger, which will either drive me to do more or drive me to feel destructive and argumentative. It's the same with fear. If I feel fear in the wild, this is a good thing because it keeps me alert. It keeps me primed for danger. The thing is, if I carry that fear into the boardroom or into a conversation with my partner, that might not be a good thing. Emotions can be inappropriate, and they can be very counterproductive and completely unfounded. They can be. We can experience fear while sitting in our chair, safe in our house, but our thoughts might run away from us. Suddenly, we're in fight or flight, and suddenly we're in fear. And suddenly we are arguing and we feel completely validated and justified to do so. Even though this might not be grounded, or well, there is no evidence to substantiate our reactions and our behaviors. As you can tell, this all becomes very sticky. This can get quite complex. It's very complicated. There are other systems and there are voices in our head which seek to exaggerate and support our actions. Whether our actions are grounded or not, for these other systems and these voices, it doesn't matter. Whether they are constructive or destructive, it doesn't matter. These other systems and voices seek to exaggerate and support our actions. Because we all have the basic needs for the same things. We have basic needs for the sense of connection, autonomy, affiliation, achievement, and enjoyment. And of course, there's a whole lot more. Emotions give this to us. Emotions signal to us when we have these things. And they also signal these things when we do not. Because emotions can trick us. Emotions can trick us that we do not have these things when we do. It's like an emotional optical illusion. The only difference between an emotional illusion and an optical illusion, with an optical illusion, we use our eyes. We can actually see it. It takes great skill to see an emotional illusion. This takes awareness. For emotions, it's about being appropriate. As an example, there are times when we wear clothes, and there are times when we do not. Mixing these times can create very uncomfortable situations. It's about being appropriate. Be appropriate. Be emotionally appropriate. We need to become aware of our emotions. We need to get very clear on our emotions and our emotional processing. At this level, emotional processing is state-dependent. This is why monitoring your internal state and using these tools to maintain your internal state is critical. It's critical to your well-being and your mental health. Use the tool of self-assessment. With a positive self-assessment, your internal dialogue could look something like this. I'm aware of my emotions and my story, and this gives me the strength to deal with my emotions 
very easily. My emotions are mine, and I work to understand and listen to everyone. A negative self-assessment could be something like this. I'm frustrated, and I find it hard to communicate when faced with certain behaviors from others. They do not understand me. I'm clearly not doing enough, and I don't feel good enough for them. I must be such a disappointment to them. Now, in reality, neither of these are absolutely true. These are simply self-assessments. The question is, which one of these self-assessments gets you to happiness the quickest? Use your breakthrough toolbox to move to a happier, healthier, and stable state of being. Chapter Summary Emotions have inertia. They do not just disappear because we want them to. Think of emotions as water. Too much water drowns the crop. No water at all starves the crop for hydration and kills the harvest. When emotions spill all over, we make others wet with our emotions. We need an emotional mop to calm ourselves down. Use the tools of self-assessment, assumption versus assertion, and somatic quietening to mop up your emotions. Separate the facts from your opinions. Assess yourself in a positive light. Most of what others perceive as being negative has a positive intention. Your parents did not want you to tidy your room because they had nothing better to do. They wanted to instill some pride in you, good hygiene, and some self-discipline. Of course, they did not deliver these intentions with the message of, clean up your pigsty. Use your tools to filter through this. Practice calming yourself down with somatic quietening. Take long breaths. Breathe out slowly. Breathe out slowly to lower your heart rate and realize that the other person does not live in your body and does not know your reasons for flying off the handle. Take care of your own spilling and mop up your emotions. If you are too contained and people call you a robot, learn to slowly share your feelings and emotions. Like a tiny volcano blowing off a little steam, it's better to blow off a little steam slowly than just erupting and destroying the landscape. Just by telling them that you're hurt or happy or excited is a start and this will make a big difference for them and also to you. This is being emotionally appropriate. This is what having a high EQ looks like. Become aware if you're having well-grounded emotions or ungrounded emotions where your emotions are fooling you into thinking something which is not so. If you get this part of your mental system sorted out, life will become a whole lot easier to handle. There is always more for you to do to improve this. If you do not get these natural systems in check, your life might start to spiral out of control like an aircraft in a snowstorm. And before you know it, your mental plane will be heading for the snow-covered mountains, preparing for a crash. No matter how much you prepare for a crash, it's still a crash. Rather focus on flying. Your emotions are linked to your drives, which we will tackle in later episodes. Remember, all humans are driven for authority, affiliation, and achievement. When these simple wants are not met, humans can do all kinds of strange things. Use your emotions and your feelings for the purpose they were intended. Use the gift of your thinking to think through your choices and actions, and rather act on that. Be emotionally appropriate, emotionally mature. Rather place your energies into your desires than into a need to act out. As a suggestion, Think of these tools and listen to this chapter again right now. This is the Breakthrough Toolbox. A set of magic mental tools to get you what you want and be seen as a wonderful person. A magic set of tools to avoid arguments, feeling down, frustrated and paralyzed. If this is your first contact with this toolbox, please start this toolbox from episode 1 and set the order of your podcast playlist from earliest to latest. This is a Be Limitless production and a breakthrough presentation for you to get the breakthrough you need and avoid feeling unappreciated and live a life they write adventure books about. Please check the show notes for the additional information you're looking for. This is a free and open presentation. It is intended to be shared with any individual who will gain benefit from this presentation. Please feel free to share the first episode of this program with your friends, family, colleagues, or anyone who could use these tools and would like to listen to a straightforward how-to presentation of how to deal with life's challenges.